What is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life, coming at you on YouTube and today I've got some football focus. The Pittsburgh Steelers just finished playing the Dallas Cowboys in week 9 of the 2020 NFL season and coming into the game this one should have been easy, right? Pittsburgh is coming in undefeated at 7-0. and uh, They're coming off back-to-back -back major AFC road wins against two of the best teams in the conference in Tennessee and Baltimore. Uh, everything was riding high for the Steelers on a big streak right now. The last unbeaten team in the NFL. The Dallas Cowboys coming in with uh, one of the worst, if not the exact worst, defense in the entire league. Their poorest defense has been getting beat up all year long. Um, you know they, they, they lost their quarterback for the season. They were coming into this week with a fourth-string quarterback in Garrett Gilbert, who had never started an NFL game. So, man, you're thinking, okay, Pittsburgh is a 14-point favorite. Uh, this should be easy, even on the road, right? Dallas is, again, an offense that's really banged up, a defense that's one of the worst in the NFL. The Steelers are on fire. This should be an easy game, but there's no such thing as an easy game in Pittsburgh fandom. When you're in Pittsburgh land, every game has got to be a heart attack. There must be something in the contract for the Steelers that says that they have to give me a heart attack every single week. And they've got to make every game a game, no matter what it comes down to. For whatever reason, once again, for this second week in a row, Pittsburgh came out completely anemic on offense and just let Dallas jump out to a lead. I don't know what it is about the first half of the Steelers, but this first half was just as bad as the first half against the Ravens. And I, like Ben came out and was was off on his short passes. He just, His vision, vision wasn't looking great. He was taking a couple deep shots where there was nobody open. There was two guys. They had Dallas had a guy over the top and underneath doing blanket coverage. He took a few shots that weren't there. He threw a couple of uh, short passes behind the receivers. Even some easy balls that he should have had were just behind the guys. So that wasn't working. The play calling was bad in the first half. I didn't like what Fickner was doing. Running the ball on first and second down. We were getting behind in the, in the count. Like, you know, second and 10, second and 12, second and 13. And still running the ball after that. Setting up, you know, third and 13, third and 16. Ending drives early. So, between the lack of a running game, the uh, Ben being off in general, making bad decisions, uh, we also had a couple of drops. Claypool did not have his best game. He had a, um, a play on the first drive where he beat the guy on a deep ball. Uh, there was a lot of infight, hand fighting, and contact, but he should have caught it. He kind of alligator armed it. He short armed the catch and he dropped it. It happened again later in the game as well. He dropped two or three contested balls in this game that he should have caught. A couple other guys did too. Uh, not the finest day for Claypool or the receivers. But that was another factor in the offense, just not playing that well. So in spite of the blocking today, doing a decent job, offensive line played pretty well in pass protection. Um, again, the running game had nothing going for it. The receivers were dropping. The play calling was bad. Ben was off. It just did not line up for us in the first half. We did wind up with uh, nine first half points, I believe. I'm trying to think back. I, th I think it was 13 to nine. We went into this first half only down four points, and it should have been way more than it was. Um, like I said, that was the offensive first half, nothing much to speak for. Uh, Dallas in the first half played pretty well. Uh, Tony Pollard, the backup running back for the Cowboys, had a couple of nice 20-yard runs. He was getting around the edge and uh, had a nice burst to him, having a hard time tackling him. Zeke Elliott didn't do much numbers-wise today, but he broke a few tackles. It was a hard time wrapping him up. He has a lot of drive in his legs. He was pushing a few guys over. Um, they were throwing a lot, of, a lot of short passes into the middle. Guys were sitting down in our zone. Uh, Schultz, the tight end, had a couple of catches. Amari Cooper had a couple. C.D. Lamb ran a couple of nice routes on us in the first half and the second half. Uh, so the Cowboys were, they weren't lighting it on fire, obviously. They only had 13 first half points, but uh, they had a nice touchdown drive uh, where T.J. Watt was in coverage on Lamb for some reason. Don't know why that happened, but he got the touchdown on us. Uh, Pittsburgh was having having our um, outside linebackers in coverage a lot against wide receivers in this game, and it beat us several times. Uh, Dallas designed some good plays. They did a nice job mixing up the play calling with a couple end arounds, a couple handoffs. Um, again, some nice beating beating the zone coverage in the middle of the field, and then getting the uh, outside guys to stack and line up against our outside linebackers. And I know that Dupree and Watt are very fast, and that they're awesome when it comes to uh, you know pursuing the ball and pursuing the quarterback, but they're not coverage guys. So uh, that was a nice game plan for Dallas. Um, ben did drive us down toward the end of the half. Finally, after like four or five drives of nothing, we did get a nice drive 
toward the end of the half for a touchdown, and then Boswell missed the extra point. Um, and on that drive, Ben got hurt. Uh, ben went down. He got pancaked where he got hit on one side and, and uh, got run into another guy. Two guys were coming off the edge, and he got pancaked into another guy, so his knee got tweaked. So Ben was holding his knee. Went to the locker room early. Mason Rudolph came out for a couple of plays after a defensive turnover, and uh, Ben came back at the end of the half and seemed like he was okay. Didn't show any, any worse for wear. Didn't miss a beat out there offensively, but, you know, go figure. We finally come down at the end of the half and finally score a touchdown, and then Ben gets hurt and Boswell misses the extra point. So in spite of the worst first half of the entire NFL season for us so far, we still went in down 13-9, to um, as you know by the score. Dallas wound up scoring uh, 10 more points. Pittsburgh wound up scoring um, 15 more points. So uh, Pittsburgh winds up rallying um, way too close of a game. Pittsburgh uh, doesn't go ahead, I think, until maybe 2 minutes and 13 seconds left in the entire game was the first time Pittsburgh really had a, a lead. Um, wind up winning the game 24-19. So second half, we got back to our roots. For some reason, I don't know why it takes us a whole half and a first half adjustment to come out and start throwing short passes. That is our game now. That is where the offense shines. You use these short passes to set up other guys. You spread the ball around. You use the tight ends. You use the slot receivers. You use the outside guys with short passes. Uh, that worked for us in the second half. We had uh, several touchdown drives, three touchdown drives to be exact, two in the second half where Ben looked a lot better. He was getting off uh, nice quick releases to a lot of the wide receivers, especially Juju, who had a really nice game. Um, offense looked a lot better in the second half overall, even though the running game was not really there for us. Um, defensively, got more pressure on the quarterback, got a couple of sacks, um, got our slot guys in there playing a little more tight coverage, but even still, the game was way too close. Final score, again, 24-19. to um, We got the win. Again, I'm always going to say a win is a win. If you can win in the NFL, it's always good, especially when, you, when you're undefeated. We're 8-0. We are the best team in the NFL. But for the best team in the NFL to come in against one of the worst defenses in the NFL, against a fourth-string quarterback on offense, we should not have been uh, fighting for our lives down to the last play again, almost like a mirror image of last week where Baltimore had the shot into the end zone and Minka Fitzpatrick knocked the ball down for, for Pittsburgh to hold on for the win. Same thing happened this week. Garrett Gilbert had the ball at about the 20-25 yard line, took a shot into the end zone, Minka Fitzpatrick knocked the ball down. Once again, Minka with the game-winning pass deflection uh, for Pittsburgh to hold on. So same scenario as last week. Slow start in the first half, come back in the second half, hold on on defense at the last minute. So very scary. My heart's still pounding. But again, we're 8-0. Uh, we made it through the first half of the season with no losses. Perfect first half of the season. Um, you know, holding on. Uh, backups again on defense playing very well. Uh, let's get into some numbers, and I'll, I'll get into it more specifically. Big Ben, his numbers look a little better than he was. Again, for the first half, he did nothing at all. But second half, uh, he had the one good drive in the first half, and then second half, he played a whole lot better. 29 of 42, 306 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. So again, pretty efficient passing the ball, using short passes, uh, getting the ball in the end zone, and not turning the ball over. 306, three touchdowns, no picks. No turnovers uh, is something we want to see more of. Uh, James Conner, very quiet day. He had been having a pretty solid first half of the season. Running the ball was not our strong suit today. James Conner, nine carries, just 22 yards. Uh, that is what, 2.7, 2 2.8 a carry? Uh, not very good. And he was the leader out there. I think Benny Snell had one or two carries. McFarland had one or two carries. Conner, I think, at 22 was far and away the leader. So nothing special on the ground. Got to get that fixed. Juju Smith-Schuster was the leader of this uh, receiving core. He carried this offense in the second half. He was the best player uh, on offense in the second half. He was getting open. He was taking eight or nine yard plays, breaking tackles, uh, used his resilience to get into the end zone to, uh, toward the end in the second half to keep us in the game. Again, a lot of heart, a lot of broken tackles, a lot of getting open, both inside and on the comebacks on the outside. Six catches, 93 yards, and a touchdown. He looked really good. Deontay Johnson came back. He had a few drops. He was uh, not on the same page with Ben for most of this game. A couple times Ben threw the ball behind him, and a couple times he had short plays where he wasn't looking for the ball and dropped it, so both those guys were at fault there. But Deontay Johnson did wind up with six catches for 77 yards, including a nice long one down the sideline where he where he uh, made a move to the inside and almost got, th got to the end zone. So he made a nice play there, uh, came back for a solid second half. 
Um, aside from Juju t- getting a touchdown, the other two receiving touchdowns went to Eric Ebron, who made a nice leaping play. He jumped over someone to get into the end zone. And James Washington, who made a nice pump and go. He made a double move on the outside, uh, made a nice catch, held onto it with one hand in the, in the back of the end zone. So Washington and Ebron making the plays. Love seeing James making a play out there. Uh, defensively, again, it wasn't as clean of a game as you would have liked. Dallas still scored 19 points, um, but we still made some plays. Uh, defensive leader, biggest game ball goes to Minka Fitzpatrick. I already mentioned that he got the game-winning pass deflection again this week. He also got an interception in the end zone, which took points off the board. Dallas was on the 10-yard line. They were they were taking a shot into the end zone. So they either were going to get seven or three, and um, he, he, uh, Fitzpatrick got the pick in the end zone to take points off the board. Also got a fumble recovery. Dallas was driving down the field. I forget if they were in the red zone again or not, but Dallas was driving down on some nice plays, and uh, Fitzpatrick recovered a fumble. Cam Sutton forced that fumble, so um, <clears throat> for the... I think second time in three weeks or third time in four weeks, something like that. Cam Sutton making a splash play out there. <clears throat> he had a nice force fumble. Also almost got a pick as well. Went through his hands. Uh, ball was behind him. Um, so Fitzpatrick was on fire with turnover. Sutton made a nice play. Uh, Highsmith. Uh, Alex Highsmith once again. Third week in a, w- a row making a play on defense. A uh, few tackles on special teams, but also had a sack today. Uh, full sack for Highsmith. He had the big pick last week on, on the nice catch on Lamar Jackson, had a sack this week as well, looking really good out there, promising. Uh, The other half sack was split between T.J. Watt and uh, Cam Hayward. Both guys were in the backfield a lot. Um, Hayward had a a big hit toward the end of the game, actually two big hits toward the end of the game, causing uh, Garrett Gilbert to throw the ball short on contact, and T.J. Watt on top of the half sack also had, I think, I think uh, between Watt and Hayward, there were like three or four batted balls. I think Watt had two and Hayward had two. Four batted balls at the line of scrimmage, which which could cause big splash plays. None of them were picked off this time, but batting a lot of balls at the line, super helpful. Also, honorable mention to Vince Williams, who was a machine today. He had six tackles. He was all over the field. He was hitting guys left and right. He was jumping over dudes trying to get to the quarterback. He must have had four or five pressures in the backfield today. Really nice stuff out of him. A couple of nice plays out of Isaiah Bugs, including a tackle for a loss as well. I like what he's doing out there. Robert Spillane was involved in a lot of stuff. His name wasn't called for any splash plays, but he was involved in a lot of tackles, especially on the running backs. He was pursuing in the running game nicely today, so I like what he was doing. Um, also responsible for a lot of coverage, so I like what the backups are doing. Again, Cam Sutton, Robert Spillane, Isaiah Bugs, all in there on big plays, not to mention the big guys uh, in the front seven making plays for us. Was not the best day for the coverage guys. Uh, once again, uh, Joe Hayden got beat a few times. Uh, Steven Nelson had two big missed tackles, one of which resulted in a big long play downfield. Another one was, uh, was just for another catch. Uh, Hayden was on and off today. Um, Sutton had his moments. Special teams. I don't know what happened here. Um, credit to Boswell for making a 59-yarder uh, to end the first half, which is his career long and a Pittsburgh uh franchise long so good for him 59 yards but before that uh the kicker was iced and he missed the actually no the kick was missed and then we actually jumped off sides so the play never ha- or I'm sorry we did had a full start so the play had to get reset and kicked five yards back deeper which Boswell then made so the missed field goal wasn't counted but he also had a field goal block today also missed two extra points um Dallas kept doing this thing where they would time it out and have one guy jump over the line uh, it's usually illegal if you push off, but he didn't push off anybody. He just jumped right over clean. He did it three times in a row. Uh, one time he blocked the kick, and another time he caused the the missed extra point, and a third time he almost caused the missed extra point. So uh, Boswell had two missed extra points today um, and the missed, extra, missed field goal that didn't count. Our special team's blocking was really, really horrible. I don't know what was going on with the line blocking down there, but we got a penalty on special teams. We had, again... A blocked field goal, a block extra point, a missed extra point. We got to fix that blocking scheme on special teams for our kicking team big time. That was a massive problem that could have cost us the game easily. This was a five point game, and that was at least two points right there, and it could have been more. Toward the end of the game, we had the ball on fourth and one, and we went for it only up five points, where a field goal could have put us up by eight points and made Dallas have to get a touchdown and a two just to tie us. But because we didn't trust the field goal team, we went for it and didn't get it. So if Dallas had scored a touchdown at the end of the game, we'd have lost. 
all because of the field goal team. So fix your blocking. Also, uh, Dallas had two big plays. One was on a free kick where we, we pooch kicked the ball to the one-yard line, and they returned it all the way to the Pittsburgh side of the field on a long return. So the kick coverage was horrible. Another play, they kicked down the field, and Dallas did a throwback play where Cedric Wilson threw the ball across the field behind him to another guy who ran it down the field and almost got a touchdown, got down to the 20-yard line of the Steelers. So kick return coverage today was miserable. Special teams was garbage today and easily could have cost us the game. That's got to be fixed in the future. That's a major problem. But, again, all in all, you got to like how Pittsburgh responded. Um, again, the defense getting pressure and making splash plays when it counts. Getting to the quarterback at the end of the game. The coverage at the, at the end of the game has always been nice. Um, you got to like Big Ben not turning the ball over. Using the new short passing offense, I just wish they would do it sooner. So, in spite of the slow start, in spite of the fact that it shouldn't have been as close as it was, Pittsburgh is 8-0. And I'm liking where we're standing right now at number one in the NFL. What did you guys think of this game? Have your heart slowed down yet? Because mine is not. So I'm going to go ahead and go and try to take a freaking aspirin and breathe. And I'll see you guys next week. Go Steelers.